story for kids. Hide and seek a short story. Jens, his sister Sally and Mark, they are BFF, best friend forever, I are bored. They had played all day, but now that was dark and difficult to see. They had nothing to do. They couldn't play so sad because they couldn't see the ball. They didn't want to go inside and play a game. Because it was a beautiful springtime night and they liked to be outside, especially after having to play inside all of the long. They just didn't know what to do and it was a little too early for them to go home. I guess I'll just go home, Mark said in a sad voice. Oh, come on, replied James. We still have time for another game of, of something, then Sally said, I have an idea. Let's play hide and seek. I was just going to say that, Jem said. Yeah, I'll wait, replied his sister. You always say you are thinking of whatever I think. To sleep. Don't, Jem said in a loud voice. Go through. Mark just looked down at the ground and shook his head from side to side. They are at it again, he mumbled to himself. Then he yelled, Okay, let's play hide and seek. I'll be the seeker. Big Town faced a big tree, closed his eyes, and started counting out loud. 100, 99, 98, 97. Sally and Mark stopped arguing, looked at each other and ran off in different direction to find a hiding place. In the distance, they could still hear. Mark counting 4, 3, 2, 1. Ready or not, here I come. Then he turned and began looking for places where to cook the hunt. Finding Sally was easy. She always ran off and then chuckled big. So, she would be close to base, the safe place to go to before being trained. Mark looked for the tree tree and went towards it, but she wasn't there. I'll wait she's behind that big bush, he said to himself. So he ran to it and was ready to take her, but she wasn't there. As he turned around, he saw James running towards base and darted after him. Just before he touched Jem's shoulder, Jem stacked the base and yelled out, Save, did you get silly yet? Jem asked, No, said Mark. I have been trained able to fight her and it's that too late. Do we know to be hiding good? So, both boys yelled out, Come on out, silly. It's late. But there was no reply. Not even a little snicker from something in the darkness. They yelled again, How on out, Sally? It's late. Still, there was no reply from the Sally. They began to worry. They started searching for her. As they walked around the area, they called out, Sally, come on, we keep up, you are safe. But no matter where they looked or how much they called out, Sally was wondering what had happened. All she could remember was crawling under the big trunk of a fallen tree to hide. Now, as she looked up, she was. She saw several stars throw a small ball above her head. She had fallen into a hole while she crawled under the tree trunk. Help! She yelled and heard her voice as he could throw out what must have been a fake. Help! 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 Sally was wondering. What had happened? Didn't hear that James Mark said excitedly. Sally just yelled for help. He feeling Sally. James screamed. That 
way we can find you. Selin heard her brother and kept screaming. After a short while, the boys are standing next to a big tree trunk. Hey, are you stuck under this tree? Asked James. Hi, look, Selin yelled. What I call under it to hide? I fell into bed. Please help me. I'm stuck. It's dark and I can't get out. But see, James, you stay with Sil and I'll go get my dad. Then he dashed up into the darkness. Don't be scared, James said. I'm right here with you. No, you are not, Sil is so. You are up there and I'm down here. As Sammy turned in the darkness of the cave, she bumped into something, screamed, and began to cry. What's wrong? Jen said. There's something down here with me, Sammy replied in a snaky voice. Shaky voice. Just then, Mark and his dad came running through the woods. Mark's father kneeled down and asked Sammy if she was okay. She could hear her crying and sobbing. Sammy, are you hurt? He asked. No, she said. But I must tell you there is something down there with me. Stand back, silly. I am lowering a rope and will be down with you in a second. Mark's dad tied the rope to the tree, found a hole under the tree trunk, big it a bead, and lowered himself into the cave. Sally could see him coming down the rope and stopped crying. Not only was he there, but the cave became brighter from the beam of his flashlight as it danced across the cave's floor and walls. As he reached the floor of the cave, he shone the light on Shelly and gave her a big hug. Don't be frightened, he said. I'll have you out of here in no time. Then he shone the light around and see and saw that she had fallen into a small cave. And very close to her in the middle of the cave was something wrapped in layer of old blankets. Mark, James, there's something down here. I'm going to tie it to the rope and I want you to pull it out. Okay, they replied. The boys pulled out the object and tied it and let the loose end of the rope fall back into the cave. The cave wasn't deep and Mark's dad boasted Sally over his head so she could crawl out. He then grabbed the rope and with a little jump was able to break the opening and pull himself out. Let's go back to one house for a cup of Tea. I'll phone parents so they aren't worried and we will see what treasure Selin found. He said, when they go to Mark's house, they sipped their tea and began unwrapping the treasure. They carefully filled up a layer of old blankets and cloth to be with wooden walls. They slowly opened it and stared in amazement. When they got to Mark's house, they sipped their tea and began unwrapping the treasure. They carefully filled out players of old blankets and to club to reveal a wooden box. They slowly opened it and... Oh my, Sally said you, this leaf. I don't believe what are you seeing. The boy and Mark's father just stirred. Inside the box, where jewels of every color look for Amazon. There are diamonds, rubies, shepherds and emeralds, of all shapes and sizes. Intermixed, they took some several gold coins and stairs of pearls. Intermixed, they could see. We are rich. The boy stayed not quite interrupted Mark's father. Someone could have Lost this and I don't think you should plan out spending any of it until you find out a little bit. The next day the four of them and Shelly's father dropped to the police station, explained what had happened and gave the treasure to the police to hold while they conducted their investigation. 
the lab, the police station said near the event the double gift ice cream was marks for the bot for them did it make them smile. The drop back in silence. Several weeks passed with no word from the police. Then one evening marks for the bot James, Sylvie and their parents. The police just called and I think he should come over right now. He said. I'm afraid there is some bad news about the treasure. The police are on their way and will explain everything I get here. Sadie and James didn't say much during the ride to Mark's house. Sally thought that since it was bad news, the treasure belonged to someone else, even though they probably lost it. Whatever happened to find it keepers, she mumbled. What did you say, Sally? Her mother asked. Oh, nothing, Sally replied. Then she let out a long, sad sigh that echoed through the car. When they arrived at Mark's house, the police were there with the treasure box. As Sally entered, the captain introduced himself and said, Sally, this is yours. Your parents need to sign some paper, but the box and its contents will be. Saving Mark and James, Sure, John and danced around the room. Then Sandy said, What is the bad news? The captain smiled and said, The treasure is worth more money than you can imagine, and with your new power will come great responsibility. Sandy didn't quite understand what the captain was talking about, and right now it really didn't matter. Mark asked, are you going to share? Of course, Sally said. If you and James didn't help me, I might still be there. Seven days later, Sally asked everyone over to her house. I have decided what to do with the money from the treasure after it is sold. She said, I'm giving one out of six to our mom and dad, one out of six of Mark's mom and dad, one out of six to Mark, one out of six to James and one out of six for me. There is an extra one out of six. Mark proudly stated he loved Matt and was right on top as Sally's calculations. No, there is no, Sally said. It's two, James said. It's not. Sally said in an angered voice, just as Mark was going to say. They are at it again, Sally said. This is why there is an extra one out of six. I'm giving it to the local charity so it can be given to these low less person, fortunate and in need. Her mother and father said it was a caring and responsible thing to do. They were very proud of her and knew that she understood what the case in me when he had turned the treasure over to her just day before. A simple game of hide and seek leads the children into the adventure of their lives. An exciting story that will help little readers turning the page to know what comes next. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.